So I'm Gaetan Verna, the director of the Power Plant Contemporary Art Gallery at Harborfront Center. I'm Joran Weisbrot, I'm the artistic director of Luminato. Well, I don't know what was your impression of Toronto, but like from, because I come from Quebec, people were saying, you know, Toronto, it's such a big town and, and, uh, and it is, you know, much bigger than, than Montreal, but there's always been that push and pull between Montreal and, uh, and Toronto. And the one thing I must say is that the artistic community that I met here, everybody's been really nice, warm, welcoming, and kind of really happy that, you know, I was here at the power plant. Well, that's good. Yeah. I mean, they should be. Well, no, but you know, I mean, sometimes in different towns, people have different reactions to uh, somebody who's foreign taking a position in, in, in uh, an institution such as the power plant. But I must say that from everyone that I've met, everybody's like, we're so happy that you got hired for this job. So I don't know how was the reaction it was, to you. It was very similar, yeah. I think. You know, I mean, I, I mean, Canadians seem to be extremely open mm. and, you know, extremely nice people and everyone has been you know really very welcoming I mean obviously you know I'm not I'm not even Canadian mm. so uh, that was I guess sort of a little bit of a different thing even and uh, but you know they were I think they sort of accept me as a potential Canadian <laughs> which is which is kind of nice I mean you know I mean yeah. this is a country of immigrants so yeah. you know everybody is sort of yeah. can be a Canadian at some point if they if they let you and we actually it was kind of funny we had a little we had a um, citizenship ceremony as part of Luminato. We oh, did that sort yeah. of in, in, in conjunction with CultureLink and, uh, and um, so there were the, all these round tables where the people who were going to you know, experience their ceremony and get actually the, the actual document mm -hmm. on the stage at the hub um, were having sort of conversations about what it means to be a Canadian. I mean obviously they've lived here already for quite some time or most of them I guess did. And, um, it was kind of funny because I was I was the one that was supposed to welcome everyone. So um, I, you know, said like you're already so many steps ahead of me. <laughs> you're more Canadian than <laughs> which, you are. Which uh, which was kind of which was kind of funny. But it was really nice. It was very touching to see you know that that kind of involvement and you know me being German. It's not necessarily you don't really um, celebrate your nationality as much mm -hmm, in Germany mm -hmm. as you do here. You know we don't do flags or stuff like that. One of my really good friends is German. Who's that? Her name is Petra Radatz and she lives in Berlin. Oh, really? And we met when we were studying in Paris. Oh, wow. Yeah, tall German. Did you study art history in Paris? Yes, I studied art history at La Sorbonne. And oh, my at, God. Uh, well, Paris won. You're... Uh, How was that? Um, it's like a dream for every young person to sort of study at the Sorbonne. Well, I lived in Paris for eight years. Um, because when I, I did a BA in, uh, in uh, management and international business, but early on I knew I wanted to work in the art world. So, um, but never as an artist. I read an article where you said you were like not a good artist or... Well, I studied opera directing, yeah. you know, so I was yeah. on my way of becoming an artist and then decided I could be great at being mediocre at that. That's it. I mean, it's funny, in, in the article I saw myself also in terms that, you know, I danced ballet until my early 20s and I played the cello and the orchestra, the whole thing, but I knew that I would never be the virtuoso because, you know, you know that early on. You can be a, a you could play well. Well, a lot of um, people don't know it. I think it's great if you do, oh, you know, yeah, because I mean, it's such an important decision. That's it. So, but early on I thought, you know, all these people in the arts, they really need really smart good managers who actually understand the art side and the importance of the art side as well as the financial side because you know if you only have a straight manager they're only going to look at the bottom line and go this show costs too much we're not doing that but you need somebody who's going to understand sure. the impact of actually putting everything forward to do this great show in order to bring it to the people while still thinking of how do we minimize the cost of this thing or how do we find sponsorship. So early on I, I knew this is what I wanted to do and at first, I mean this is me being, being a child, right? So I lived in Montreal and as I would walk down to my ballet, my ballet lessons three times a week, I would uh, be crossing the house of Franz Baldecker, who was um, um, director, conductor of the Montreal Symphony Orchestra. And I remember thinking, like, 
oh, you know, Zubin Metz's brother used to run the Montreal Symphony Orchestra, and then he moved to the New York Philharmonic. So I just think, you know, I could be the administrative director of the Montreal Symphony Orchestra and then move to New York. I mean, you know, I'm 12 or 13. Well, that's I'm pretty thinking. good. <laughs> what I'm thinking. I was dreaming of being a neuro um, astrophysicist at that point. So, but then, but then over the years, it's really visual arts that that really I, I still have a great love of the opera, of classical music, of everything that's performance art. Um, but then, you know, when I moved to France, at first I wanted to work in auction houses, and then I realized that I was really much more interested in becoming a curator and working with artists and uh, the notion of bringing the art or great works of art that, that I truly appreciated, sharing it with, uh, with people. So that's why I lived there for, for eight years. But then you didn't study for eight years, so you must have done something. Well, I studied, and then after, you know, in France, I did some internships and worked at the... Um, um, the was also this program called uh, Ecole du Patrimoine, which is basically when you're in France, in order to become a curator, you have to do this really difficult entrance exam contest, national contest, and they only pick as many people as oh. their are jobs. And um, because the French have this notion of sharing their great wealth and knowledge, you can also be accepted as a foreign mm -hmm. uh, student. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I did mm -hmm. that for two years. And so there's a special course to become a that's curator. That's it. To become to become like a, a, in order to be take care of national collections, you have to be oh, wow. a national curator. Oh wow! So there's a program. So you're for a that. national curator. Well, I'm not. I'm not French. So, but I did the same training as the the you know all of my colleagues were now, now either directors of museum in France or uh, you know curators of, of national collections. So that was a great eye opening. So you know between my studies and that, and then doing internships and, and uh, projects. So I spent eight years in Paris. Wow. Yeah. I always find sort of Paris is like death by beauty, you know? It's so beautiful. It's I like, know. It's, it's, like living in a, it's like living in a huge cake. It is, it's all actually the time. This, this, you know, even after eight years, you, you turn around a corner and you go, oh my God, I never knew this little neighborhood. Yeah. And, um, and I remember through those years, I used to always pinch myself and say, oh, remember, look, you're in Paris, you're doing this, you're doing that, you know? And, and um, you know, um, this kind of coming of age, I, I moved there when I was 24, 25, which is practically the perfect time to be there, you know? And so, um, and it really, even though that I was already a person that would go see theater and dance, but it was the heydays, you know? I remember tell, I don't know if I told you, but I would, um, Théâtre de la Ville would have Pina Bout yeah, yeah, come yeah, of every year. And the only way you could get a ticket for that was if you were, if you were a regular, you know, patron, right? Yeah, yeah. So my husband and I, he wasn't my husband at that time, but uh, my boyfriend then, but, um, and our friends, we would get season tickets as students just to see to Pina. go see other things, but mostly because we wanted tickets to go see oh, wow. Pina Bouch. Which piece you know? did you like the best that you saw? Do you remember? Uh, I rem well, the first one I saw really struck me was Iphigenie en Torride, where oh, yeah, you had like the opera singers and then the dancers. Yeah. And I remember seeing this at Opéra Garnier, and I was just like blown away. That was like a real revelation uh, for me. Um, and you know all the pieces that she's done, you know. All, I remember one year I went, and it was a year where I'd been sick for nine months. You know, I'd lost tons of weight, and um, it was kind of the, you know, my friends were like, "Are you going to go to Pina Bausch? I'm like, "Are you crazy? I'm going. I have to go." You know, and I was it makes really you healthy again. I was really frail, you know, and the show was three hours long, and after one hour and a half, we came out for you know like the intermission, and I was like, "Oh my God!" You know, I was really, really frail. And we, I remember us laughing and saying, German, three hours. Not that it's like 90 minutes of a show, but it's like a serious, yeah. uh, a serious dance yeah, yeah, performance, yeah. you know? And, um, and I remember, I mean, you know, between that and uh, seeing like um, Reich's project by Peter Sellers mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, um, Maison de la Culture uh, um, Bobigny. Bobigny, sure. You know, Bill, Bill, uh, Bill T. Jones. I mean, I saw so many things yeah. while I was there. You know, it's you know? amazing what yeah. the richness of that landscape there. That's Absolutely. It, you, know? you know that Pina Bausch hasn't been in Toronto in, in how many years? What do you think? Ever? Has she ever been? Oh, yeah, no, she has. They have? 
Twice. Okay. She hasn't been here in 30 years. 30 years? Yep. Because her company, when she was still alive, it played. Well, she's going. They're, they're going Ottawa? to Ottawa a lot. Yeah. Yes. And I think Montreal also more often, but. But Montreal, maybe when there used to be the International Dance Festival, but since then, really, like since I've arrived, like it came back in 1996, no. So, are you going to bring them? I, you know, I think. I mean, I think it would be important to do. Yeah. I think it would be important to do, and you know, the company is still sort of so much in a great shape. Yeah. Really, you know, and uh, and and it's still, you know, you can still sort of feel her spirit. I went to see a uh, 1980. Which actually might have been the, the, the three-hour piece that you saw. Okay. Was it sort of very little dance in it, and it was, it was on a, it, the the whole stage was covered with grass. No, that's no? not that one. Okay. The one that I'm talking about, I forget the title, but it was what like. What did the stage look like? It was very bare, but people would come in and come out, and I'm wondering if there wasn't something about some Spanish something, you know? Okay. I'm trying to remember. Um, this is 1996, okay. I think. Okay. So it's been it's been a while. But Iphigenie en Tauride just yeah. stood out. In, yeah. You know, sometimes the first time you 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 see an artwork and you go, and you know, that's that's always been um, my quest is that. You know, as I'm telling you about this this piece, I remember where I was sitting at Théâtre Garnier, you know, and just being, oh my God, this is how you can do opera also, yeah. you know, and the mix of opera and dance. And, and I remember how I, I really, um, I was mesmerized by the fact that you could understand that, um, you know, uh, a part is also like the, the how the, uh, the singer sings his part and yet you're looking at the dancer. And also one element that I thought was really interesting is that usually when you go see operas, you always have the subtext running. But in this one, there was no text, right? But it didn't matter. We got yeah. the story regardless because yeah. the dance was there yeah. in order to, to uh, reenact the, the, the opera. So to me, it's like you talk to me about it and I remember it and I remember where I was and I remember how happy I was to, to see this and always, for me, the trigger is thinking, you know, once the show is over, would I start it over? And it's yes, you know, I would want it to, to yeah. start over. We so. had this beautiful, uh, uh, there was this beautiful moment this year at the festival. We, you know, we presented Einstein on the beach and there was the third performance and it was a, the public loved it, mm -hmm. you know, and they, I mean, it was always a huge success, huge applause. And, uh, and then standing ovations immediately, which I guess you can also understand because, you know, after having sat for four and a half hours, you kind of want to stretch your legs. But anyways, I don't think it was only that. that no, people I don't were like, think so. I need no. to stand up. No. But then as the applause was dying down, sort of in the, at the end of, you know, the third performance, um, there was this guy in the audience that was screaming at the top of his lungs, encore! I know. And he really meant it. Yeah. You know, that was kind of the amazing... Were you at that performance? No, I went no, to you the were... first one. Yeah. And I can tell you, honest the truth, it ended and everyone I, I met the, like for the coming weeks, I said to them, you know, if you tell me now, let's go sit, I would go, like any time. It was, to me, it's, it's again these, you know, some people call them aha moment, but this moment where you're like, oh my God, this is perfect bliss. Yeah. Everything is yeah. seamless. Even the moments when you're like, you know, the, the, the one act where there's that column going the, the, up the life bar? slowly. Even that, I was like, wow, how beautiful to just like look at this happening. Or um, the court scene, the, 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 the quirkiness of some of the, the text that the judge was talking about women and things like that. I thought <laughs> it was great. That's it was a great funny. text. <laughs> I loved it. You know, he was saying it all, um, and I really... Did you find that the piece, was the piece dated for you in a way? No. I didn't, I, it's funny, no. no? I mean, to me, it wasn't, it wasn't either. And I mean, I, and a lot of people asked me, and, I, and, and some people I spoke to actually said they thought, you know, they sort of talked about museum, and I'm like, I don't think so. And to me, I mean, to me, I think the idea of bringing back a piece from, you know, over 30 years ago, or whatever, is... I think it's actually quite interesting oh, because, yeah. you know, usually in the theater things disappear yeah. after, you know, two yeah. years, three years or whatever. And to sort of also look at theater in a way, you know, does it stand the test of time? And I think it absolutely yeah. does. But um, I don't think that, you know, Guernica by Picasso or the Mona Lisa, whatever, you know, they haven't lost anything of their 
How many, how many Van Gogh exhibitions are they doing in the world, right? So it's like no, we never I know, seem to be I tired know. to see these I mean, these I do think, though, that sometimes it is important to try to look at these artworks in somehow a new kind of mm -hmm. way, because obviously there's so much layers of, 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 of interpretation put on them that they sort of almost become a little bit tamer mm -hmm. than, they, than they should be, I think. You know, I, 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 it was funny, I was in... A, I was in Istanbul uh, for a wedding, and, 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 and the guy who got married, a friend of mine, he's an artist, and uh, he gave me this book. And, and his work is all about, um, he's, he's Turkish, and his work is all about the idea of copying, because he mm. says, you know, in, 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 in his youth, there wasn't really a lot of art sort of to, to look at, and so he sort of claims, you know, that copying a work of art can sort of, you know, reproduce basically the sensation of seeing the original work of art and blah blah and he apparently at one point he sent a letter to the Louvre and suggesting that for one day they would take the Mona Lisa and turn her upside down and show her upside down and I thought that's actually kind of a really beautiful idea and I don't know it, the book unfortunately didn't say if they actually did it <laughs> I doubt because you know I mean yeah. imagine you're walking to the gallery and I all know. of a sudden you see that thing upside down and I mean it's sort of what Baselitz has started to That's do it. as well you yeah. know painting yeah. Yeah. To, to, to look at that figure in a new kind yeah. of way and I think I don't know I thought that, that, that that's sort of sort of you know I think a a really radical kind of idea because all of a sudden maybe you know she's like shedding all the all the reproductions that you see of of, mm. of that artwork all over the world and all of a sudden you know she sort of becomes something turned else. everything yeah. around you know yeah. so 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 you're also confronted with with uh, something else and I think you know if you do present these classics it is also important to somehow maybe dig down back down to what that original impression was that people had you know I mean with music for example you know a lot of the stuff that we're playing today and that's why sort of the historical instrument you know the to, to, to play stuff on historical instruments is, has become so big because the, the classical symphonic sound that we have today is a completely different one exactly. than what they heard you know yeah. 200 years ago they're, they're, they're doing now I think for the first time they're going to do Wagner on original instruments, on instruments of that time, basically, that were used at that time, because I don't think they had, no, they probably had, I, but they were still different and they sounded different at Bayreuth for the first time, so I think that's kind of... Are you going to go? I, I'd love to, but I, I'm not going to go this year, probably. Yeah. I, I, maybe It's maybe on next my to-do list before I die, going to Bayreuth. I do want to get a bicycle. I was actually walking down Queen Street, like, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, and I was like, I'm going to buy a bicycle now, but then I was like, oh no, I actually don't have the money right now, so. Oh, to buy a bicycle? Well, well you, you know, have I have that, I have, well, that's, but that's my problem, you know, I have this thing, when I buy something, I want it to, I want to have the feeling that I, that it could be, that, that I will even love it still in like 30 years or yeah. whatever, you know, I hate to buy something that I know I'm going to, you know, just leave here if I'm, you know, or oh, that yeah. I'm going to throw away or whatever. I mean, on the other hand, I had so many bicycles stolen in Berlin or they were like completely dismantled, mm -hmm. like all the, you know, all the gear shift things or whatever were taken off and the, and the saddle and everything. But I just hate to sort of think, you know, it's something that I can't have for the rest of my life. It's a stupid thing. I don't no, know. No, I mean, I had a bike when I lived in Paris. I remember I had a, it was the, my bike was like first generation of mountain bikes. And I looked so cool, you know, with that bike. And then when I left, I wasn't going to take it because it was really heavy. So I, I don't know if I gave it to him or I sold it to my ex-boyfriend at the time. Oh, that's good. You yeah. sold your bike to your ex-boyfriend? Was he already, he was already ex. Oh yeah, he was ex. Oh, okay, he was good. Ex, okay. Ex, ex. Good. Would you sell your bike to your current boyfriend? No, my boyfriend, no, no, my, no. my ex-boyfriend actually did that to me and I was not his ex at that time. Oh, no, 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 no. He was like, I don't like my bicycle anymore. Don't you need a bicycle? <laughs> Here, give, it, give me 500 Deutschmarks. And I was like, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> you must have been are in we love. Still, are we still together? <laughs> I would have said forget it. No, 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 no. In a couple you share, whatever, you know. But uh, no, I have this really nice, I don't know. See, I... I want to bike because it would take me like 10 minutes to get from my home to here. But you know, it's like until I know the city a bit better, I think um, 
because sometimes I find people drive kind of like um, in a very hastily way and I don't want to die, right? I have kids no, that I need no, to, I to raise in a, in a gallery to run. So yes. I'm thinking like, no, but seriously, it's like, you know, maybe walking is safer than, than taking a bike, you know? Tell me about the, the, the Sherry Boyle. That's amazing that she's yes, uh, representing yeah. Canada. No, that's great. I was Fantasy actually on the jury. No, no, I know, yeah. I know. Well, yeah. that's why I'm, I'm yeah. mentioning it. Yeah. So, uh, no, I think it's good. Does, is, it, is it basically you come into a room and you talk about all, you, everyone sort of comes with like... Everyone came in with With, with like ideas, ideas for artists? Of, there's of no artists. official, there's no... Not in the... Is there a nomination process no. or something like that? Or it's basically really just the group of uh, curators, directors that, that well, sit together? Well, it was together. basically, it's the National Gallery that, that's been taking care of it because I think... The Ottawa, whole, in, in, in Ottawa. The it did, was Gallery. the meeting in Ottawa? Yeah, meeting in Ottawa and... Uh, that's such an amazing museum. We I really three, loved going there. We were about five or six in total and everybody came up with like, you know, names of artists that we thought were ready for this, this, um, this adventure. Um, because, you know, at the same time, um, it's an exciting news, but it's also very scary, you know, for an artist. Sure. Because it's the whole the whole sure. world will see your work, and you know, I mean, um, you know, it will be like, oh, this was a great pavilion, or this wasn't so good. You know, it's yeah, yeah, it's no, very. Uh, so we, it's also figuring out, discuss, you know, having a discussion about which artists, why, and also understanding, like, is the artist ready? for this sure because not though everybody might think that they would all want to do the Venice Biennale but we're you know not every artist is ready and poised to be able to withstand the pressure and also um, you know the announcement was done what um, well I read it uh, yes yeah was it, it was yesterday? last Thursday the official announcement maybe the person knew maybe a few weeks uh, before but the show is next year so it's in essence 10 months is she gonna create new work I I don't know. I it imagine. depends. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it might be a mix or it might be like, uh, um, you know, depending on what she wants to create there, she'll be working with the curator of the National Gallery. Uh, and know. that's always a different curator as well, right? Well, I think for the last, the last two ones, since the National Gallery is taking it, I don't know if it's the second or the third time, it's, it's the curator of contemporary of the National mm -hmm. Gallery. But I think in the past it used to be, um, you know, like, um, through like um, not a nomination process, but people would submit, you know, uh, a curator mm -hmm. like an institution would submit a project. Mm -hmm. But since the the what's really difficult there also is everything costs a lot of money, and you need to fundraise to get money to actually do it. Oh really? There's oh, yeah. no there's no budget by the well, that is sort of associated with there this. There used to be. There's a budget from the national, uh, not from the national gallery, a budget from the. Um, Canadian Council, uh, Canada Council. There used to be a budget from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, but I think that's been dropped. Oh, wow. And I don't think there's money from Heritage Canada. And then, so, you know, it costs about a million dollar to to actually do this. Just, you have to remember. So every, does the artist then have to find the money or does the no, no, organization, no, this, this is gonna the be, National Museum? It's going to be the of, National Gallery okay. fundraising, okay. Um, you know, and uh, you have to remember that everything you bring into Venice comes by boat, right? Sure. And everything costs a lot of, uh, of money. And um, and so, but it's. I think it's exciting. Um, I think so. We should go next year together. Yes, come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we'll go to Bayreuth afterwards. For me, really, the second, you know, biggest aha moment of the festival was how the artists really loved being here. You know, and how they came up to me and also the other team and said, you know, they've never had a better experience at a festival, and they love being in Toronto, and they, you know, felt so much at home and so well yeah. taken care of, and I think that's really what it's about, yeah. too, you know, because you want the artists to come back, you want the artists to go out into yeah. the world now and say, you know, Toronto is the place that's to come it. to, Illuminato is the yeah. place to come to, they treat you well, it's an amazing city, yeah. it's a great place, you know, and to sort of create this temporary home for artists, yeah. that's really what I, I, think, I want yeah. to do, and, you know, to, 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 to open up that process and access also to you know, the audience and not just put a work in front of them and just don't explain it that's or it. don't give them sort of no, some sort of a, really a different access point to it. I think that's very important. And that was so beautiful to see how much the audience was really eager to find out more and how much they wanted to get 
how, much, how intelligent also their question yeah. was and how into the thinking process they were getting. You know, we had this beautiful talk with Wilson, Philip Glass and Lucinda Charles at the AGO, or, you know, Robert Lepage, who's so articulate about his work, and, or Nicole Krauss said to me, you know, she did a reading and she said, you know, the, it, I, she's never had an audience that was that intelligent yeah. and, and really asked, you know, very detailed well, and see, specific that's the thing questions. Also, I think, like, here at the power plant, it's this notion, as I was saying to you before, this notion that since we don't collect works of art, so we're not going to buy any works by the artists that we choose. But how do we make sure that their experience yeah, at yeah, the power plant yeah. stays like in their list of, of exhibitions? Like this is where yeah. you know everything was possible. We have this amazing installation crew. Um, yeah, no, I've met them. I you mean, know, your team is Paul amazing. Your team is and great. And, stuff. and I'm excited about our project. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm excited. You won't tell them yet. But I think, I think this notion that we can make things happen here yeah. and yeah. let's do great things and let's do, not do them because we, you know, do them because for us it's all about doing it and enabling an artist to see his dream performance come to realization or this exhibition where they have this crazy idea but if we if we work in advance and if we put everything together um, you know we have at the PowerPoint we have this amazing board they'll throw a dinner for the person in order you know when we have like international lecture series in order yeah. for the person as you were saying to say oh, wow I was really well taken care of um, by the institution, by its board, by its community. And uh, I think that's why, um, you know, all of the, the elements of doing like artist talks or doing like uh, opening talks where you could just go around the exhibition it doesn't need to be very long. 20 minutes, a wrap up of this is what we want you to, to begin to think of while you're looking yeah. at these, this exhibition. And then after, if you want more in-depth information, if we have a catalog, if we have information, so that people like don't feel that as they cross the uh, threshold of the gallery that they go, well, I don't know what this is about, you know, so that no, we make it our job to make sure that everyone who comes in has an idea of what they're going to see and why we think it's important for them to see it. And then after they can make up their mind and go, sure. well, this was good, this was, you know, or I liked it or I didn't like it as much or, oh my God, this was like the best thing I've ever seen. This thing that art is not this thing that you, you love, you know, right away. It's like if you like ballet and you say you don't like modern dance, well, if you've never seen modern dance, how could you say that you don't like modern dance? Yeah. Because modern dance is not ballet, you know? Or, you know, I mean, I'm more of a modern dance person, but I, you know, a few weeks ago, um, because my daughter wanted to see Swan Lake, I went with her and I was like, oh my God, I love this. I, I still so love this. Uh, no, it was. Um, a company from Hungary, Hungarian uh, dance company. Oh, really? It was, it was in Montreal. It was oh, amazing. In okay. It was yeah, really yeah, yeah. amazing. And, um, you know, and then seeing this made me, reminded me when, when, when I used to dance and, you know, taking hours to watch, to watch um, videos of, um, what's her name? Uh, Natalia Markarova mm -hmm. doing the swan and, and going, you know, so it's like you need art as something that you need to, to um, you need the time to see many things and, and you need to take a risk. You need to give yourself a chance to say, yes, I am going to sit through five hours. Sure. You know, and suddenly you lose yourself in this environment. And I think that's the whole point of art, right? Um, and then these moments stay in your mind and you're doing something else during the week and suddenly this image comes to your mind at that moment because you're suddenly back in the you know in the presence of this this art right so uh that's what i hope that we can do for this town right that's, yeah absolutely we gotta bring the best that's it bring the best and uh and take risk and and make it happen and and say yes and collaborate you know because i think it's uh it's um it's a great it's a great moment in in time and in terms of toronto